the attorney's up here real quick. Right. I've received an inquiry from the jurors as to whether they may take notes on the transcript. Please remember that pursuant to the instructions, the transcripts are not evidence, so they will not be sent back into the jury deliberation room for consideration uh, if deliberation is required in this case. You are going to take notes. Uh, you will be permitted to take your personal notes back for consideration if you're called upon to deliberate. So after the video is shown, the uh, courtesy copies of the transcripts will be collected. You may continue, State. Everything okay? I'm here. Uh, we're here, all right? What do you say? Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. Yesterday, okay. 
Um, and we'll get to the kind of the, the, the details on that. There are some um, some questions that I have based upon what I've witnessed yesterday and then what we've last spoken about. So just to clear my mind and go through everything, I'd, I'd, I'd like you to just start from the beginning, if we can. How we, how we led up to where we're at right now. Okay. 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 For, uh, <clears throat> for a while, uh, my wife decided. I, uh, she began watching these videos, talking about the afterlife, talking about salvation, talking about how families go to sleep. Slow down a little bit right now. I'm just having a hard time keeping up with you too. I'm sorry. That's okay. Let's speak up. And in watching these videos and watching everything going on, she presented them to me. And I started watching them with kind of a um, uneasy, like, yeah, whatever. And the more and more we watched, the more and more I gained an understanding that there is more than this life here. Mm -hmm. A higher, a higher um, level of consciousness. Mm -hmm. And then we started researching and researching and researching, and then we started finding more about the world just coming to the end, the apocalyptic end and that our families are going to be separated and, and enslaved and to better to avoid this to all go together okay you mean die, die together die together that's correct okay okay so because my wife's been chronically ill for a while this really appealed to her and because it appealed to me also because she wouldn't be in any pain found I wouldn't be separated Mm -hmm. uh, there would be no more sorrow, no more heartbreaking, no more anything. It would be a, a salvation and everlasting life. Okay? Mm -hmm. So we kept doing our research, kept doing our research, kept doing our research, uh, reading up things, meditating, and decided that, yeah, this should be a thing. This should be what we should do. Okay? We had sat down and talked with the boys and Zoe just on different things about, you know, death and the way the, uh, you know, what would happen if mommy died, you know, how would you feel, what happened when daddy died, what did you feel? And the consistent response was that we don't want you to die, we want to die with you. Okay. So when did you guys start talking to the children about this? What month we? Or January now? No, it was before Thanksgiving. Okay. And, you, and your wife first showed you these videos when? When she started watching them, or she first started showing them to me in April. April. Okay. And what was she using to watch these? Her Microsoft Surface laptop. And that's the one in the blue case? Yes. Okay. It's a flip. Yes. All right. Okay. Go on. So you talk to the children? You talk to the children. Just get a general understanding of what they want to do or not. And they didn't want to live without us. Okay? We didn't put them back and say, we're going to die and, you know leave you behind, but you know, what, would, what would you do if mommy and daddy died, and we don't want to live without you, we don't want to live without you. Okay. In conversation with my wife, we didn't want to live without them either. We wanted to bring the whole family together and make it transverse together. Mm -hmm. okay. So we were coming up with different things of how we could do this. We didn't know how we could do this, um, because we're not violent people, okay? Not violent people at all. Um, first we said, you know, uh, what if we, you know, we started reading different things? There's something came on TV about cough medicine. Okay, mm -hmm. so could they have some cough medicine that I put them to sleep? Like overdose of cough medicine, just put them to sleep. Mm -hmm. Advice, peaceful death. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so my wife made a pudding pie, pudding pie, jello pie. Mm -hmm. um, froze it. But nothing happened. What was in the pie? Uh, what was in the pie? Sleep. Ease, these uh, different things with drama, how you do it. The stuff that puts you to sleep. And you said you have, you have a medical background, is that correct? I have a medical, but not a chemical background. Not a chemical, okay. Yeah, I'm a physical therapist. Okay. So you don't have all the like, terminology and all No. no. Is your that. wife? She's a physical therapist, no. Okay. We, so you, we look it up and. Where did you guys look this I was gonna, just fixing to ask, where did you guys do the research at? We went up and down the, honestly, up and down the um, aisles of the uh, Publix and asked the um, 
the, uh, the drug guy. I can't think of the pharmacist. Thank you. You know, what's something that uh, puts you to sleep? You know, Joel falling asleep. When did you guys start doing this research? That yeah, started research. I started research before Halloween, um, but I just intermittently tried to figure out what was going on. You know? Okay. Um, when we found out the best the best drug you know, the, the, to use was a drama. It, it, it's the stuff in um, Benadryl. Um, that's the safest way to put it away. That's the safest way to put it. So it didn't work. Um, so we kept thinking, thinking, talking, and just researching different things. And finally, you know, we started researching, and researching. And we said we're just going to have to do some sort of examination. Okay, plead to death. Okay, and that's how they used to do it way in the back when they used to do sacrificial things. You take a plead to death. Plead to death. Oh, plead to death. Sorry. Okay. That's okay. Okay. And so we started researching where would be the easiest to stab to do when not so the kids could bleed to death, maybe in combination with the sleep drug. Okay. Okay. And that's how, how everything led up to be. Okay. So that's through research. You mm -hmm. guys have found, now you're saying you and your wife did this together? Mm hmm. Okay. So I'm doing all the research and everything, but what, what, how did we get to Monday morning? What, what, take me back to the holidays, when do you think the children die, that type of stuff. I'm still trying to remember when the children die. I can't put those pieces together. Yeah. And I'm sorry. No, no you're, you're fine. Um, we wanted the kids to stick around for the Christmas holiday concert because we didn't want to disappoint that. Did you guys celebrate Christmas Day? No. No, the kids were there before Christmas. Because family is saying that they, that, we were sp well, that they spoke with Megan the day after Christmas. Was Megan alive the day after Christmas? No, they, she died right on the, on the day after the boys did. Right. I remember you saying that the other day. That's why I've, I've made contact now with your family mm -hmm. and with Megan's family. And so Megan's family is 99% sure that looking back through cell phone records and stuff that they spoke with her, not text message. They spoke with her the day after Christmas. No. And she said the children were sick. No. Okay, so when... So you're adamant that they died before Christmas? Yes. Okay. The children you said died 24 hours or so a day prior to May? Correct. Okay. So let's let's go to the day of their death. How did this go down? Woke up at 11.30 at night. We set the, the, the alarm for 11.30 at night. And got up out of bed. And it was to do Zoe first. Okay. Meg walked into the room and she walked back into her room. Step by step. So, so you guys are sleeping in the master room, I'm assuming. Yes, my wife and I guess. And the puppy. And the puppy, okay. Which boy was upstairs? Zoe was upstairs in her room. Okay. Alice was upstairs in his room. Tyler was sleep downstairs in the um, library room. And why again was he down there? The two of them were sick, so we kept them apart. Okay. All right, so, okay, go ahead, sir. It's okay. So we walked to the door, to the door, door Megan and I hugged and kissed, and pretty much, we know what we need to do. Come back at me when we're done. So I went into the room. And it took me two or three hours sitting there because it was, it's a tough, but the everlasting salvation and the, the thought of that everlasting salvation was there and I needed to save her soul when her to be with us. Megan kept coming in, what's going on? I'm like, it'll be done in a little bit, it'll be done in a little bit. I just 
it's getting past that. But I'm not. Uh, no. The initial thought was to um, uh, to stab into the umbilicus uh, above the above the navel, so I could get the inferior vena cava or the abdominal aorta and it'd be. Um, Bleed out with no no time whatsoever. Mm -hmm. I know I tried. I don't know if I ever punched it. Um, I don't know if I did or not. I saw a little mark on her, but I, I don't know if I saw saw anything. But then she rolled and it started swiggling, and I put my hand over her mouth and I put a pillow over top of her, so she went to, and then she started to fade away, and I just held that until there was no motion left. So you didn't lay on her? I did lay on her when she laid on her belly. I'm sorry, I laid on her to keep her down and I put the pillow on the top. Okay. Do you think you stabbed her or no? I don't know. I don't and I didn't I didn't see any I didn't see anything. Okay. So how long would you say it took you to take her life? The whole motion? Yeah. Like from the minute that I was sitting in there, or from I was saying once once you initially take action, okay. Did you have a knife with you? Yes. Which knife did you have with you? The small knife. Which is what color? Green. Okay, that's the green buck knife that you talked about. Green buck knife. Yes. Okay. All right. So you had that in her bed. Mm -hmm. um, so how long from the time that you had the knife out to the suffocation until you think that she was deceased? I want to say 10 minutes, 15 minutes, right on there. It seemed like that light night took forever, so it's hard to really gauge on the time. Okay, and you said you used a pillow over her head? Yes. Was she face up or face down? She kept moving. I think she was with on her back with her head towards the the wall, so in that, in that way. So for 10 minutes to 15 minutes, you held a pillow over your daughter's head? Mm -hmm. How long did she kick and scream? Only for a couple minutes. A couple minutes? Mm -hmm. So like two minutes? I, I had no timer, but yes. So I'm just saying, yeah. minutes, look at that. And I just held, held it there for like a long time. Yes, it is. Did any other, did, did the other children hear her? No. Did your wife hear her? Well, I just kept going up. I, I felt her in the, in the, opening the door to see what was going on and shutting the door and walking back. Okay. Because you wouldn't, you just see the light coming in. Okay. So you think the sun was coming up or was it just the light from the... It was the light from the, the hallway. A light bulb? Okay. Um, so now Zoe is deceased. And what happens next? Walk out. To, uh, sit with Megan in the room for a little while. How was the body? How do you mean? How, how was, did you? How was the positioning? How, where was the pillow? There was a pillow behind her head, and her hands were out to the side, and I made sure the covers were on top of her, just in the essence to keep her warm. Did she have anything in her hands? No, I had put a rosary in her hands later on when I moved. When you moved the bodies? When I moved the bodies, yes. Okay, we'll get to that. And that was post-rigor? Yes. Okay, okay. Sorry, we're getting a little bit ahead of No, that's okay. I'm getting ahead of myself, I'm sorry. Okay, so Zoe's gone. You and Megan console each other, whatever you guys have to do. Mm -hmm. And then what happens? We go into Alex's room. Alex's room? Yes. The one that's to the staff in the one upstairs. One well, upstairs, okay. Yeah. And, um... Beforehand, we had talked about the aspect of she's got to hold his feet down, and I'll do, I'll do the sap. How old's Alec? Thirteen. Okay, so he's the oldest. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, so what happens? We walk in. He's on his back. She holds. She's just sitting there, holding his feet together. We're just in there. Just eyeing each other, just gaining the confidence, I guess, you know. And I go to, I, I, I stabbed him, and 
and he started kicking, was trying to get up, and he kept rolling. So I ended up putting a, there was a pillow there, and I put a pillow in the back of his head so he wouldn't hit me with the back of his head. And I reached around with my hand and held his um, nose in his mouth. And he kept rolling and kicking and rolling and kicking, and then it eventually stopped. Where was Megan at? Megan left midway through there and went back to the room. How long would you say it took to kill her? That one I have no idea. It did, it went quickly, uh, but I don't know. Okay. And there was blood and everything in his bed. In his bed, yes. Where did you stab? Where did you stab him? The, in the stomach, the same spot that we identified as you know, where you could get the inferior vena cava. And, and what area did you call that? Inferior vena cava? No, 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 no. You, you called it earlier abdomen. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's overall the abdomen. I think you used another term earlier. It was uh, the one that you specifically spoke about, about the navel. Umbilicus. Umbilicus. Yeah, yeah. umbilicus. Okay. Is that something that you researched in there, or you knew that from your your profession? So research and learn ahead of time. Okay. Especially on a website called Quora.com. Let's spell that again. Q. U O R A dot com. Q U O R A dot com. Yes. And what is Cora? If I go research this, what is it going to show me? Cora dot com. You can ask anything they want. There's people feedback. Uh, we happen to find it just by looking up knife uh, techniques. Um, and you ask it anything, and they'll show you, and they'll tell you and explain to you the best way to do things and where to do things, and suggestions how to commit suicide. And I was going to ask, is it like a suicide website, or is it a... It's an everything website. So I can go in there and say, how do I, how do I change the oil on my... That I don't know. That is it like medically based, or... It's not medically based. It's, um, a lot of topics that people talk about, uh -huh. but don't, I guess, talk about on the internet. I just used it for suicidal techniques and also to get um, ideas how to do it with the knife. When did you? When were you doing your research on Cora.com? Started that before Halloween. Before Halloween. Yeah. Where did you learn? Of, I know you may have said this. Where did you learn of Cora.com? I happen to be just researching knife techniques, and it comes up and a couple of questions came up as you know. Uh, how do I kill myself with a knife? So I clicked on that, and it was Quora.com. So I clicked on Quora.com. There's a whole bunch of, there's a lot of stuff out there. Yes, yes I know the internet is very crazy. I know there's some, some stuff on there. But when you typed in, when you were talking about knife techniques, like was it uh, how to cut up some steak, or is it how to? Offensive techniques, defensive knife te technique. OK. All right. OK, so you've done your research on that going back pre-Halloween. Yeah. Um, you did you have to create any type of accounts or anything like that? You you go in, you ask questions. Uh, the suicide ones when I was asked about suicide, once you clicked in two or three times, uh -huh. like you know the links, uh -huh. it asks you to verify your age okay. uh, through Google. Okay. So you just click out and just do three more times without. So you don't have to have like a login or a sign in name or any mm -hmm. create an account? You can create an account, but you don't have to. You don't have to. Um, do you remember which device you were using when you were researching Quora.com? Uh, my, my iPhone. I don't know what the phone number for that is. I don't want to say it's 0742 or something like that. 0742? You mean the passcode? No, 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 the, the phone number to it. For the iPhone? Yeah. What was the passcode for that one again? Five, five one zero eight. Five one zero eight. Correct. Just for your iPhone, which is what you did the research for Cora.com. Right? I, and also my my black um, Surface app. Surface tablet. Yep. When did you do this uh, research on the tablet? Intermittently between. Is there a login or is there a sign in or I mean a, a passcode for your tablet? Passcode for my tablet is seven five. It's a face one, but I'm pretty sure it's seven five seven seven. Capital G, lowercase U L A. Dot com. Mm -hmm. uh, just capital letter. Okay. Yeah. All right. Okay. So 
getting back to taking the life of Alec. And is it A-L-E-K? Yeah. Okay. Alec, who was 13. Mm-hmm. Um, you're saying that you were solely responsible for his uh, life loss. His, 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 his murder. That's right. Okay. Your wife, at this point, was where? She had gone back to the room. Okay. Had you, had you given the children um, any medications prior to this night? I know you talked about the, the, the pie or whatever that your wife had made. Um, up until this point, were the children routinely given any type of medications? Are we doing some supplements in there? Okay. But... Alright. So the night in question, they weren't under the influence of anything? They were just normal... They really had the, um, the, um, what would you call it, a pie or something like that? Pie. Yeah. But then that, that didn't work that night. I don't, I don't remember if we gave him anything, because the, the, those were two separate nights. We tried to buy the one night. We tried it before. Mm-hmm. But I don't remember if we tried anything in that night or not. So you didn't try to, like, sedate him or anything like that prior to killing them? Sleep. Doesn't make sense why we wouldn't. We, we, yeah, we must have given him the cough medicine again. We must, I'm sorry, we must have given him the cough medicine again. Uh, I, I'm just thinking if you're trying to. No, do the medicine again. Yeah. You, and you've done a lot of preparation. I mean, you right. started preparing about the guy that started bleeding quite a bit, but then being strong, he kept moving, moving, moving. So then again, I had to get, like, put a pillow on top in my hand and but he went really, really, really quick. So a lot of blood? I didn't see much blood because I had it covered up. Uh, like how much blood came out. I could feel the blood coming out because it was all over my hand. hand. But it was, it was bloody. No, I'm sorry, I didn't ask him. Um, Please. With the boys, which knife did you use? It was all the green knife for the kids. And the buck? They were, they were both buck knives, but the green knife was for the kids and the one Megan used to uh, just stab herself with. She also used the green one? Yes, because we established the fact that I had to get a bigger knife for myself because my body mass is bigger to get the same thing. Okay. So Tyler, in which room downstairs was Tyler? Tyler was in the library room downstairs. Library room. So if I walk in the house, where where at? You got to walk in the house. The first room on the left is the music room. Mm -hmm. The second room on the left is... uh, the library room with the double French door things. Okay, and that's the room. Was he on a mattress? Was he? He was on the ma- uh, mattress, and the mattress. My wife is very adamant about um, 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 mattress covers, mm-hmm. so he was on top of the mattress cover and all his blankets and everything. Okay. Did that mattress stay downstairs? That mattress stayed downstairs. Okay. The cover and the everything else was brought up when I brought him up to the room. So obviously there should be, if he if he bled or bled out, there should be signs of that on the mattress. The, the mattress was clean because of the, um, the, the cover. What do you mean by the cover? By the mattress cover. Okay, which is cloth. I don't know what it is, but it doesn't allow fluid or anything to go through. Okay. All right. When I moved him, I was able to undo the, undo the cover. So then sometime later. Correct. Okay. All right. So Tyler is killed. Who's in the room when he's killed? It's just me and Tyler. Megan is outside in the door. What is she saying at, at, during any of this? She's doing meditations. Was she drinking or consuming anything that would maybe... Not at that point, no. Break her down? Because it's just a lot for a parent to go through. Yeah. I mean, it's a lot for a human being to go through, mm-hmm. let alone a parent. Okay. But we had salvation in mind. We had the greater, and that's, in our honesty, it's a, we love our kids, and that's, it's sad. I, no, I got you. I understand. Okay. So, now all the children are gone. How long until the sun comes up? Be about five o'clock in the morning. By that time, 
was the sun coming up like part of a rule or anything like that? Because you mentioned it a couple times that Megan told you that they have you have to do this before the sun comes up. Is there is there a reasoning behind that? I don't know. I don't know why the reasoning was behind that, but it had to be done before the sun came up. Yes. Okay. So it's nothing during your your research or investigations or anything like that that has nothing per mind. I don't know what was on her side research or whatnot. I, okay. I was just told this needed to be done before the sun came up. Okay. All right. So they're all deceased. What do you guys do? To go up to the bedroom. To start talking. How do we want to work? You know, the kids are dead. What are we going to do now? What's going on? What's our next step? You know, what are we going to do? Do you mean this wasn't planned? It was planned, but it was like just the dog. Did she want to go first? Oh, and then just said, you know, because you know, there was some discussion of her, me going first and her staying, staying last, her, her going first. She wasn't sure which one she wanted to do. So we decided that, that you know, the dog we went the dog with us, so we, she held the back side of the dog down and like put the, um, I call them Mexican blankets, they're like these you know, blankets around, and I was able to hold the, the knot in the, her snout and her um, nose closed, and she went peacefully. Picked her up, put her in her bed. And then Meg it was like, I want to go next, I want to be done. And then what? So you just suffocated the dog? Yeah. Yep. So if there was any type of marks or anything like that on the dog, you wouldn't know anything about it? Okay. What kind of marks were on the dog? I, that, I just suffocated the dog. You didn't stab the dog? I didn't stab the dog. Okay. Was there stab wound on the dog? That's interesting because I, I, I didn't stab the dog. Where there's a stab wound on the dog. Okay. I, the dog was collected as well. So. Mm-hmm. Oh, I, I doubt. My oh, it's, it's neither here nor there. I'm just telling no. you. Okay. All right. So you kill the dog. Mm-hmm. And then you say you like put it in bed or something like yeah. that. The bed, and place the, the bed and we wrapped it in the, the, the blanket. We're not put it underneath the, um, the bedside table in, the, in, her, in, her, in her bed. Her. Okay. What was her name? Breezy. Breezy. Okay. Did you meet? I'm sorry, where did you kill the dog at? It was on the foot of the bed on Megan's side. In the master room? That's correct. Okay. And that was the final resting spot was in the master bedroom, correct? Correct. All right. So the dog's dead. Hmm? Now what happens? Meg wanted to go. Okay. So we have decided, and I said, well, do you want me to get your wine? Do you want, what do you want to help calm this down? You know, so it won't hurt as much. We had some spray stuff, and so she, she could use that instead. So she wanted some wine and some, um, it's purple, um, Tylenol PM. And she started taking that a little bit. Gave her the knife, and I laid next to her, and she put the knife into her stomach. Okay. And I said, did you get the spot? It's right here. She said, yeah, I feel it. Okay. I'm laying there, laying there for 45 minutes. It's supposed to take about, so about 10 minutes, whatever it says. If, if you hit the spot. And what is in that spot? What are you talking about? The interior of the And then on the umbilicus. You're supposed to be able to bleed out. They say in one to four minutes, but under 10 minutes. And what are you specifically targeting within that area? The inferior of the Okay. It's, it's a big blood return. Okay. Okay. Uh, it's a large vessel, and you bleed out in your abdomen. It's, it's quick. All right. Okay. How much? How much did she consume? Wine or, or the? I'm assuming is it grape flavored? You can mm-hmm. take the whole. Yeah, you know, the first one was grape flavored. Um, what do you mean, first one? Uh, she had a glass of wine with the with the stuff. Okay. We were laying there for about 45 minutes. After she stabbed herself, she says, "I feel nothing happening. Nothing happening." I said, "Okay, this is good." What, what do you want to do? Like, you know, she said, do we have any Benadryl? I said, we have a liquid Benadryl. She goes, let me have that. Let me try some of that. Maybe that will put me to sleep or let me go sooner. Mm-hmm. So she was drinking a liquid Benadryl, Benadryl, Benadryl. And I was checking back on her, give her some peace. We walked around, came back, walked around, came back. And at one point I thought she had passed from going to Benadryl. She was still there, and she had sat up. What makes you think she passed? She was very quiet. There was no motion. 
I can see her. I've been going up and down. This is from afar without even me going up to see her. Okay. Was her eyes open? Eyes were closed. She communicating with you? I thought when I just came out, you know, I was like, Meg, she said, I'm here. And I said, you know, okay. You know, so I said, what do you want to do? You want to try more banjo? Do you want the knife back again? What do you want to do? And she goes, let me try some more banjo. And then if that, we'll do a second. What's that? Okay. Give her a bunch more banjo. Like I said, let that settle in for a while. Settle in. When you say a bunch more, do you got a approximate amount? I really don't. I know she was a, 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 she was a bottle. Yes. Yeah, she was a, a, I don't know, it was a big bottle. Okay. Uh, like a, a family size Benadryl thing. She could, she killed the whole bottle? In, in two different sippings, yes. Oh, okay. Okay. And that wasn't happening, so she decided to do, go through her liver. Okay. We looked at, I pulled up the thing and the pad liver, we laid it out on where, it, where it was on our skin. Okay. And it was, it was according to landmarks. And I said, it's right in this area. So, okay. And she, with two hands, pushed in. And you heard like a little click, as if it went through something. Okay, so I was like, okay, it sounds like it went through the liver, that's good, okay. She pulled it out, she put the knife right next to her. Then I just laid with her. And I laid there and held her. And we just waited. It seemed like hours went by and nothing else happened. I, I got up. I wanted to check on our, our boys and our little one, make sure everything was going okay in the house, everything was okay. Came back and she's sitting up at the edge of the bed. And she's sitting in the room. I'm like, what was she cleaning it with? There was uh, uh, one of my t-shirts. Um, she had, uh, I think she had a towel at one point. Okay. Um, But she was up, I can't, but she was up, she was washing it, uh, uh, rinsing at one point. And she's like, this has got to be done, it's even too long, this is ridiculous. I'm like, shall we just go on, look at different other aspects to do this, how do you want to do this? She was, I want this ended now. I said, okay, what, what does that mean? She was, I want, to, I want you to take the pillowcase, put, put a pillow, put it over my head. I said, huh, I don't know if I can do that. And she looked at me, she goes, if you love me, you can do this. I want to be with my babies. I so, said, yeah, you know, it's, and she just looked at me, she goes, you're strong enough and you can do it. Okay. So I said, why don't you take some more Benadryl so at least you're not going to fight me. And I'll do it. So she took some more Benadryl. She took some more Benadryl. And maybe about 15 minutes later, I came back in the room, I said, you still want to do this? And she talked to me, like, uh, very far out, yeah, to get it done. So how much Benadryl would you guys have? I don't know. Uh, did you have to go get any more during this time? So in that time, no. What, what other times did you have to? Uh, after that was done, for me to commit suicide. And so you had already prepared, I mean, you basically, you had enough to take care of the children and yourself, or, or Megan? Megan and myself, for what we thought. How many bottles do you approximately think you had? We had two boxes of Sleepies, I know that, which is straight dimethyl, which is um, these little pills. Um, we had two things of Tylenol PM, I remember that, which is a great purple one. And I think we had two bottles of Benadryl. It's a big box. Family size? Yes. But getting through Megan, did she take it all? She ended up taking a lot more than what we had thought would take it. So, I so her, her number should be a lot higher results-wise, you know what I mean, like as far as toxicology. I'm assuming, yeah. Okay. Um, when she was cleaned up, you talked about the wiping of the towel or something like that. Did you see a substantial amount of blood or anything outside of the body? She had she kept the shirt on. I didn't look underneath. Okay. Um, Did you see anything on the bed? Blue blood on the on the sheets, but she, then she changed. She wanted a different sheet. I remember that, so she put a different sheet down. So the old one should still be back at the house. It should be. Okay. 
So she tells you that it's not working. She wants you to suffocate her. Right. Pillow. That was the gray pillow. I think you kept talking about it. Was a little gray rectangular pillow. Yes. How big? Uh, it's like one of ten pillows. That. Twelve. Uh, it's a. Uh, about the size of half of your case there. Not yeah. your case there. Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah. So small gray pillows are that same. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Uh, I want to make sure I'm telling you everything perfect. When she changed the sheet, she put a bunch of sheets on the, a bunch of stuff that was wet on the um, bathroom floor. And later on, I cleaned up and threw that away. So the original sheet is there. I threw it away. Yeah. Okay. I threw it away and washed it. I threw it away. Okay. So any of the sheets that were like found in like the washer dryer or anything like that, are they related at all? I didn't do any wash, I don't think. You haven't done any laundry since Christmas? No. Okay. No. Right. I don't look like that. Okay. I'm just threw that sheet away because that was like, that was full blood. That sheet was full blood. Okay. All right. Um, so, go on. Proceed. Sorry. It's okay. So then it, it came to me. Then Megan asked that I wait a day or two to make sure everything had everybody passed, make sure the house was all set and that kind of stuff, and it's on. So that's what I did. I tried, started, I started the Benadryl. I tried hanging myself. The so Benadryl you had to go buy more of? Correct. And that was where? I went to CVS 24 Hours, I went to Publix, and I went to Walgreens. There's one across by the Starbucks. That's like CVS. CVS, so you went there. Mm -hmm. The Publix is right there off of Blake, which mm -hmm. is right there in front of Celebration. And the other one is where? There's a wall wall right next to Five Guys in the little restaurant thing there. Oh, the new area. That's correct, yes. Okay. And this was the day after or so, or when did you start purchasing more vintage rope? Not the day after or so, yeah. Did you purchase anything else? Besides Benadryl? Alcohol. Okay. Um, rum. And some more, um, cold blood. It's our wine. What's the wine? The red wine or something? It's a red wine, yeah. Okay. And I also thought that it might be easier. See, we didn't, I'm not much about guns in the house, but I was reading on Quora that you could kill yourself with a pellet gun. Pellet gun? It hurt. Where did you shoot yourself? In the liver and the heart. Back to two wounds. The liver and the heart. Mm -hmm. The liver the first time. I bled in it quite a bit. Didn't do anything. But I woke up later on. And we'll have it checked out. But we'll photograph it later. Okay. The mark's still there? I, I haven't looked at the mark. Okay. I'm so we'll it's been forever. Okay. Um, that was the last one. I tried the razor blades, the radio artery, which I told you I hit, but they didn't do it well in the, um, they didn't do it in the tub, so it dried up. Um, zip tie around the neck, the only thing that did was irritate my, my glottis. I couldn't get down the carotid artery because my neck is too big. So I tried to substitute that in with the um, towels with pressure points to go the carotid arteries. I tried to, um, set up hanging over the edge of the beds. Um, was trying to figure out how to go through and fall in the knife from the right direction to get it upward, up into my, throw my knife for it to get my, um, what should we call it, um, diaphragm. Um, was also researching but couldn't quite get to the femoral artery because the way the, how deep the femoral artery was. Mm -hmm. Where were you doing your research at? The internet. Well, I mean, um, what device? Uh, Meg's phone and my phone. Meg's phone, okay, and which phone? Because I know you said you had two. Uh, hers is 6465, and that is, um, I think she had a pink case to it. Okay. Which phone was lost? My 6536 one, a Samsung. Um, and that one was lost before Christmas. And where was that one lost at? It was lost in Florida. I don't know where I lost it from uh, the airport down. Okay. That was the Samsung? I think yeah, the Galaxy 2. 
Nope or something. Galaxy Note 10. Okay. Which phone was left in a, like a Starbucks or something in Sarasota? That one was that phone that was mine. Um, and I drove from that, went back and got it. Which phone? I don't know the number. You don't know if it was an iPhone or a Droid? It was an iPhone. It was the, your iPhone? Yeah. You have now? It was still yeah. the same, same phone? Yeah. Okay. So you went back and got it. And I can't remember, was that when the family was still alive that you went down there to Sarasota? No. They were already dead? Mm-hmm. Okay. And you drove the, the van, the, the red van down there? Mm-hmm. Was there ever a white van or something involved? Was there a moving van, or did it appear you guys were moving at some point? Like moving out of that residence? That was just how what people were saying. I don't know if there was any truth behind it. No. Okay. Prior to the deaths, I mean, were you guys planning on moving out of that home? Prior to the deaths. Um, we had planned to... I don't okay, so like, did you ever get a rental truck or anything like that? Or, yeah, they win. Did, uh, but, but, but you guys moved in in May, or when? Like, May. May of 2019? Yes. Okay. So, somebody had said they saw like a moving truck or something out nearby on the residence, near the, near the house, recently? More than us. Okay. All right, that's fine. No, we're not. So people were calling in and see people were saying, oh yeah, it looked like they were moving out or something like that. So, mm-hmm. okay. So you guys never had a moving truck. All right, mm-hmm. on to the next thing. Sorry. Um, so you drove down to Sarasota, left your iPhone at a Starbucks. Did they call you? Or how, how, did, how did that go about? Did you call it or what? How did you get your phone back? I was leaving and turned around. I realized I started going. You turn around and went back. Okay. Um, what were you telling the family during this this time frame, like around the deaths and after the deaths? That we were either uh, vacationing at the beach or I was looking at 55 sisters purchase. Who were you communicating with? Sisters and mom. Your sisters? Which sisters? Kelly? I wasn't communicating with Christy anymore. Is that Chrissy or Christy? Chrissy. Chrissy. Yep. You want to talk with her anymore? Mm-hmm. When's the last time you talked with Chrissy? A few weeks back. I don't know the date. Was, I, I really don't know. I'm sorry. What did you guys talk about? Um, I was pissed off that she wouldn't stay out of my business. Oh, uh, okay. How about your last conversation with your mom? That we were going to eventually be coming up and talk about moving up north, that kind of stuff, just to suffice her and calm her down. Okay. You talk to your dad lately? No, I don't think so. Yeah. When's the last time you talk, talked with him? I don't know. I really don't know. Do you guys have a good relationship, or...? You have a decent relationship. How about you and your ball? Her and I are very close, and that's why I had to really be, really be evasive with her. Could she tell that maybe you were being evasive? She could, that's why I had to reinforce the fact that I was trying not to be. Okay. Your sisters? My sisters just, they love me. And they have a sixth sense. They do love you. I struggle with them. Yeah. I struggle with your family. All right, so Meg's dead. You come back from Sarasota. We were trying to establish a better timeline before, but approximately when she was taken, when, when Meg died. And you're adamant that all this all took place before Christmas? Yes. All right. Positive, 100%. Yeah, before Christmas. So, has anybody been, have you communicated with anybody after that? Has anybody texted you? Have you been using any of the other devices, anything like that? Using the devices to text people, yes. And that's, why'd you do that? 
keep people away so I could finish myself. Gotcha. I was in a bad world that I needed to, I need, I still need to get to them. Yeah. I still have to get to them. Yeah. And people are getting closer and closer. And... I don't know, people said that they were communicating with what they thought were your family members. Mm -hmm. And ultimately it wasn't. No, it was me. It was you. Yep. The zip ties and the knives and the research and everything, how come it didn't work? Zip ties didn't work because I couldn't get enough compression on it. The knife, because in all honesty, I chickened out and cowered it out with a knife. Okay. I tried, I taken so much Benadryl, then I took this, you know, taking the alcohol to Benadryl, and every time I seemed to live a little bit closer, closer, closer. There was one day, somehow I woke up in the garage um, in my urine and whatnot, um, and I had thought I died back then, I died then, oh. and didn't, so. Okay, and where, how quick after did you move, you said you wanted the, the family to be together, mm -hmm. right? So take me through how, how does this take place, how, how does, because when they were all killed, they were all in different positions inside the home. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what happens? First day, I, lay, I just laid in bed with Meg the first day after she, she died. Just laid in bed um, with her. Um, I want to say it was the second day after she died. I said, okay, time to get things moving, time to get everything going. And went in, made sure she was covered and everything was taken care of. She was on the, her, I remember her left leg had fallen off the bed which was kind of weird. So I was able to move her left leg up and tuck her leg underneath, tuck underneath to get her nice and comfortable. Move Zoe in, put Zoe in. Um, before all this was done, we had all these, we had the kids bringing all those little, those little altar things. Okay. There, there were like favorite items or something? Yes. Like okay. So I had to fix those because I knocked those over after I put Zoe up. Good. Okay. So I fixed all that. And then it was a, which one do I do first? So you, bring Tyler over or up or to bring Alex up. And I thought just because of the, you know, my strength and I, I wasn't too strong at the time right there, that I should get Tyler upstairs. Tyler from, he was the one that was downstairs. He was the one downstairs. He's 11. He's 11, yes. Okay. So I was able to get him up on my shoulders and carry him up a little bit, a little bit by little bit. Okay. And to back up a little bit, I want to get, I want to speak about Zoe. Yes. So Zoe was in her bed. Correct. Had you checked, because Ritter was kind of, Ritter Mortis was brought in, but you talked about it. Yeah. Did you check on her periodically to see when she'd come out? I hadn't, no, I hadn't checked on her periodically. I just knew she was in Ritter. Um, just because I went to go, I went to position her, so in my mind, she had to stay warm, okay. and her arms were outside, so I went to put her arms down to make her nice and comfortable, and I couldn't move her arms, and I was like, okay, she's still on regular. So I brought the blanket above her, just so that she'd be warm, until I was able to reposition her. And when you say reposition her, when you're, when you're doing all this, is this still while she's in her bed, or is it you already moved her to your bed? But she was still in her bed. Still in her bed? Yes. Okay. So when she's movable, yes. and under the blankets and everything, at that point is when you moved her to be in bed with Sarah? Correct. I, I upped the, um, the fitted sheet. Mm -hmm. I scrunched it together and carried her in my arms and laid her flat, made sure her head was comfortable on the pillow, and put her, let her sit there. Then I had to pick up everything and knocked over. Okay. And, and her head, because I understand that she was at the foot of the bed. That's correct. Right? So she's laying like this, left to right, Meg's laying like this. Is her head towards... Meg inside of the bed or your side of the bed? The head is towards my side of the bed. Okay. Her feet are towards. And you slept, if you're looking at the bed on the left side of the bed, Meg is slept on the right side of the bed? Yes. Okay. So her head's on your side, left side of the bed, mm -hmm. positioned feet towards Megan. Correct. All right. Wrapped up in a blanket. Correct. All right. Okay. So Tyler's next. Mm -hmm. Tyler is downstairs. Correct. You said that. You were able to get him eventually upstairs to mm -hmm. the room. So how do you do him? What happens? I move his mattress from his bedroom because he wasn't on his mattress. Okay. 
Move his mattress from his bedroom and put it on the floor. His bedroom upstairs? Correct. Okay. Then pick him up and just carry him up at a time. His items or trinkets or whatever you call them were already in the in your bedroom? Mm-hmm. And what did he what specifically did he want to bring with him? He wanted the scarf, the soccer scarf. Soccer scarf? Yep. And what team was that from? That was from the Team USA versus Canada game that we went to a couple weeks prior. Okay. Team USA. Okay. Did you position that on his body? No, I positioned it on the on the toy box itself. On the toy box. Mm-hmm. All right. Um, you said something about um, your daughter's hands. What did you put in her hands? A uh, set of rosaries, I think. set of rosaries? Mm-hmm. How about Tyler? It was some kind of religious aspect, whether it be rosaries or some kind of um, something along that lines. Now, did you guys already have these items? Those are mine from collections growing up. Growing up. All right. Did you grow up in a church? I was a forced Catholic, yes. Forced Catholic, yes. Okay. Understood. Okay, so Tyler gets a set of rosaries. Mm-hmm. How is he positioned? He is on his, when I put him on, he is on his, like, towards his stomach, with his head towards the side. I just can't remember which. His head was facing, I think, back to the back of the wall, back of the building, on the jar. Back, okay. Is he on his face? Is he on his side? How is his face? He's on his side. Yeah, for his face, it's like, it's, it's more so like right here. Okay. All right. Um, and then that leaves Alec. Right. So take me through that. That one was tough because I had to get the mattress out from underneath him because I couldn't drag him on the mattress. Mm-hmm. So I took the blanket, this, uh, this comfort blanket, put it on the ground, and we moved him to the ground. They moved the mattress into the room. How did you move him to the ground? What do you mean? I picked him up and put him on top of the comforter that was on his bed. I put the comforter on the ground so he wouldn't be laying on the rug. Put that on the ground. Put him on the ground. Brought the mattress into the room. Made sure the mattress was set and then put him on the... Did you have to like drag him by the comforter or did you pick him up or how does this work? I moved, I moved the sheet and the... Okay. I put the comfort on the bed, then I took the sheet, picked the sheet up with him, okay. and put it onto the, onto the blanket, the, the comfort cover. Moved the bare mattress into the room, okay. then I was able to pick him up and take him. I was adamant I did not want to drag him, he was my son. I did not want to drag him. Um, so I picked him up as hard, as the best I could, and a little steps at a time I got him through. So you carried him? Mm-hmm. You carried all the children? Yeah. That's just something that you wanted to do as a parent. Versus dragging them? Right. Yeah, I don't, yeah, I, I, the ultimate respect to them, I understand we have different opinions about it, but the ultimate I can respect, see it. Oh, you okay. don't want to drag them like a piece of... No, no, it's just me. Absolutely. Okay. So you get him positioned, you get Alec positioned, um, on the mattress. Which way is he positioned? He's on his side. Um, okay. Let's go to Looking up to our bed. What do you know? I think he's looking up towards us on one side or the other. I'm pretty sure it's facing up to his bed. Okay. Okay. Because I know one of the boys was almost face down when he was found, and one was on his side, like you just described Tyler was. So I was wondering maybe if Alec. If any of them were uh, closer face down, that would have been Tyler. And Tyler was closer to the to the bed next to your wife? No, Tyler was the last one. Okay, so Tyler was the one closest, or the farthest away from the bed. Correct. All right. So Meg, Zoe. I'm sorry. Alan. Yeah. Tyler. Correct. Okay. You good? I have a burn. You need a... Uh, yeah, can I have a tissue? Yeah. Okay.
Come on. You ready to drink? You need water or anything? I'm just water. I guess it's... I think I said I have nothing to hide. I'm telling you. I have uh, this. I... Front. Okay. Deliveries, boxes. Well, and then 
I don't want any, any things you've seen during my uh, being unsuccessful time after time after time to. Yeah. Um, so there's like a pile of boxes and stuff like near the door. Were those like presents or what, what in the world was all that? A pile of boxes near the door. Yeah. So the people at the scene were telling me that there was like, it appeared like almost like Christmas presents. Did the kids get to open Christmas presents? No, they weren't alive for Christmas. They were not alive for Christmas. Okay. By the, by the, by the printer. I think there was like packages or something like they were talking about. Okay. So during this past weekend, the power was shut off, is that right? Sometime this weekend, yes. I'm not quite sure when. Okay. Uh, recollections were, I don't really know, I'll be honest with you. Did you often sit out on the front porch? Out and sit out on the front porch? No. Because the day that the agents and everybody were there, you were out, you were seen out on the front porch. You know, I don't know why. I don't remember that morning really, like how things matriculated. Um, I just remember I pounded the door. And just hours before, I'd already fallen down those stairs once before. So, was that? My legs gave out probably because I was so uh, OD on Benadryl or dehydrated. And I was peeing brown. So, I was probably just so dehydrated and so whatever. Okay. Um, but I don't, I don't know exactly how I got, like I said, I remember the end of the door knock. So it was this fast knock. I was like, okay, so I came downstairs. And for something, something was telling me somebody was coming, and I did not know what the whole deal was. Um, last, the night before, I remember feeling like the house was being surveillanced. And I was seeing all these red and green knots and oh, yeah, there were things. I, I, I don't know if it was, I don't, I don't know what the cause of it was. Um, but I came downstairs and I opened the door and no one was there after the knocking because it took me for a while to get down there. That was the night before? No, that was that morning. Oh, that morning? Yeah. And after that, I don't have much of a recollection of, except a bunch of guys coming in and I don't remember. Okay. I don't know why I was sitting on the front porch. Yeah, I guess you were sitting on the front porch and then they went and made contact with you inside or something. And then I also remember seeing Megan out there talking to you guys, which wasn't true. No. No, I know, but I'm just telling you what, you know, it's like, so I don't, that's why I mean, I don't quite... But now that it's been a couple of days, you probably have a better recollection of what's, what transpired that morning. I don't have a, too much of a recollection that morning, honestly. Well, I mean, looking back, I mean, I can tell you now she's she's deceased. No, I know. So, so we know she wasn't talking. Correct. Yeah. yeah. So you, do you remember what, when they come in the house, mm -hmm. do you remember what you told them? No. Okay. All right. I, I, I don't. All right. Um, one thing that just popped in my head, I'm sorry. It's a, what, all did, what all was purchased at Academy Sports? The two nights. Were they the only things you purchased that day, or what? Uh, they were intermittent days. Did you purchase, purchase that together? No. The green one, when did you purchase it? That one was purchased right after Thanksgiving. After? How about the other one? The other one... Sometime afterwards, before Christmas, because we're, Megan and I were going over what needs to be done, stabbed and wearing, she made a comment to the fact that the green one wouldn't even go through me. So you might get a bigger one. I had to get a bigger one myself. Okay. So there was like a, a whole bunch of items that, that appeared like they came from Academy Sports, like with a bunch of the SKUs, like tags and stuff like that. There was like mm -hmm. a bag of stuff. Do you know what I'm talking about? Like some clothing articles and that type of stuff? Typically clothing. I remember I picked up two fishing lures, I think it was. How many times did you frequent Academy? No. Uh, sorry. I might have gone there four times or five times. The clothes? The clothes. In the, I know what you're talking about. There's clothes in the back of the van. We had picked up a bunch of clothes 
um, for Alec. Okay. Okay. Because of upcoming events and that kind of stuff. Yeah. And we weren't quite sure when everything was going to occur, so we had a bunch of clothes purchased for him. All right. And did you guys know it was a family when you guys purchased that? No, it was just uh, my guy. The kids are home with uh, Zoe. And during any of the trips when you were buying fishing lures or anything like that, were you guys with the kids? No. When were they purchased? After the kids and Meg were dead. I want to say right before Christmas or right after Christmas or around the time. Um, he was using debit cards, credit cards, cash. Cash. Cash? cash. Mm -hmm. When's the last time you used a debit card? Or credit card. So no, that I have needed to purchase. I uh, purchased those um, clothes on credit card. I remember that? No Bank of America card. But after that, we had cash around, so we just decided to use cash. All right. So prior to their deaths, you guys were already using cash. Mm -hmm. All right. You said you used the Bank of America card for the clothing. Mm -hmm. Where's the guns at? One was underneath the bed because I shot myself. I was laying next to the circle underneath the bed. The other one, I found out was not that good of a whatever, so I put it in a uh, reusable shopping bag that's in the garage on the top shelf. Is that one of those... Uh Bags that you bring to public to wherever? Freezer bags, yeah. Okay, or oh, freezer bags. No, 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 those, those, those reusable cooler bags. Yes. A reusable cooler bag on top shelf at the garage. Yes. Now, there's like a detached, are you talking about that, the garage out there? Yes. Okay, so the detached garage, top shelf. Top shelf, looks on the, yeah. Okay. Right. Is there any other weapons or anything like that in the home that was used to, used during any of these deaths or anything like that? I don't believe so. So the two knives, because we got those. Mm hmm and the two guns. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, did you guys leave any notes or journals or anything like that? We left a note trying to explain what we did. Did you guys sign that? No, we just typed it up and printed it. It was already printed? Mm -hmm. Was it printed when Megan was still alive? Uh, no, I printed it after Megan was alive. We wrote it up together, and, and I just didn't print it before. Did you print that off of which computer? Was it a right. tower? It was a phone. Your phone was connected to a printer? Yeah, you can air print. Oh, okay. So that, that there would probably be a record or something on your, your phone of that? If I saved it. I don't remember if I saved it or not. Right. Um, what kind of zip ties did you try to use? Uh, they're, they're about that wide. Is it? And they're long, um, pretty industrial. Where'd you get those at? Uh, Celebration Hardware. Is that like an Ace Hardware or something like that? Celebration Hardware? Yeah. Where did you buy those? I bought those not for that purpose. Uh, I bought those for the sofa because we had trouble with the sofa yeah. uh, keeping together. So I bought that for that. How long ago? Beginning of October. Right. And then afterwards, I Looked at it and was like, "This I could use this for myself." Yeah. Yeah. Um, where did you physically put one around yourself? How did you get it off? Well, went to the bathroom and I had what my wife calls the industrial strength toenail clippers, mm -hmm. and I was able to cut it with that. Okay. Where is that? Is that tie up? They were all. I tried it multiple times. Mm -hmm. The pieces of them I kept in a box on top of my dresser. What kind of box? It's just a, a, a brown box that had soap in it. Okay. Um, and I just piled them there. I was trying to keep the place neat. So the used zip ties that were around your neck mm -hmm. are on a brown box. In a brown box. In a brown box. Mm -hmm. On top of your black dresser. Black dresser inside of your master bedroom. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
else that was used? Any type of straps or ropes or anything had like that? A strap that was not used. It's a uh, that they use or used? I tried using it okay. uh, for uh, setup purposes. I hadn't gone that way yet. Mm -hmm. I was going to give the Benadryl and whatnot and another try. Um, those tensioner straps? We talked about it the other day. Yeah, ratchet straps. We just talked about it. Yeah. yeah, we talked. You, you mentioned it the other day. I just didn't know. Okay. Oh, just trying to run through things. That's okay. So it's either going to put it on the, the hinge of the door, mm -hmm. put my feet against the door and lean forward, or do the same thing up in the bed. Did so you wrap door. that around your neck? Mm -hmm. Like, try to test it? Mm -hmm. what, what, what color was the straps? Red. Red straps. Where are they at? Um, the the tension at that there. Yeah, the ratchet strap. Yeah, there's one. Okay, where's it at? It's up on the side of the bed, hanging on the headboard. Okay, so it's hanging from the headboard. Mm -hmm. okay. Um, we talked about a bunch of like homeopathic type of stuff, like some alternative medicines or whatever that you may have tried to use or you know, that you believed in or whatnot. Um, one interesting thing that I had that was brought up to me was there's uh, arsenic. I know. <laughs> Tell me about that. Oh, there is arsenic? Yeah. Where? In your home. If I want to know that, I will use that. So you didn't use that? No. Okay. Where was arsenic? It was collected. There's a lot of, like, old school medicine. I didn't know if maybe, because you had talked about the other day, your wife was maybe into, like, a little bit of alternative medicine. Yeah, she's in alternative medicine. So it was, like, this or weed or something yep. like that. This weed, yeah. What is it called? This... Something milk? Milk, the, milk thistle. That's for the liver. Milk thistle. That's for the liver. Mm -hmm. um, liver detox. So did you know that there was arsenic in your home? No. Mm -hmm. So that should not be in any of the bodies? No. Okay. That you know of? That I know of. But, yeah, because I think that would have probably killed you. But I was trying to see if I could mail order arsenic. Really? I am not They have this pill out of Mexico, too. That cut, gets through, gets caught up in customs 10 to 20 percent of the time. So I was even trying to do that. Was it like a suicide pill or something? Yeah. Damn. Do you also research that on your phone or tablet or something? Or it was a phone, I do believe, at that time. And that was that. Was that after the death? Mm -hmm. After that? I'm grabbing anything. Yeah, I was gonna say. It seems like you're desperate at that point. upset about that I'm here that I'm not with my family let me see let me see the list here of this so I've been in constant contact with the family with your family your living family mm -hmm. and there's some things here that I'm going to try to answer for them okay because there's you upset a lot of people okay um and I'm not going to get into your beliefs and everything like that. You and I both agree that we don't have the same beliefs. All right. I'm not saying, I'm not discrediting you. I'm not saying that you're a bad person or anything like that. But there's just some things that I don't believe. All right. Did you guys, since you guys seem very planned, this is very methodical. I mean, other than the fact about you taking your own life, uh, which I, I, I'm still kind of questioning because you guys, if you had such a, a method and you've done your research over this time, I don't understand how you get to the killing of the children and then you and her have to take some time to see like okay what's going to happen here am i going to go first are you going to go first it just seems like to me that you guys would have a set regiment like okay before some of the children have to be gone the next day we're going to consult each other do this then you go first and i go and here's how i'm going to go now i said you you've already said that you chickened out but it seems like to me that you would have already had a plan. Like, you would have said, okay, well, here, I'm going to use this knife or I'm going to use this gun or something. It seems like that just doesn't make sense to me. Okay? I understand that. And I'm not getting upset or anything. I just don't, no, I just don't, I, I, I'm just telling you as it is. And I, I appreciate that. Did you guys have any rules in place? We had a rule in place some time ago. Okay. Um, I don't know if it's up to date. Okay. Um, it, was, it was made like six years ago. Okay. And uh, is, are you, are you supposed to have your parents go over things, or your, who's, who's kind of left in charge to, to take care of what you guys have, or as a family, I mean, who's supposed to step in? No, I have 
sort of the rule that doesn't say, I mean, you obviously probably weren't planning this back six years ago. Mm -hmm. you, this is this is something from 2019. Good afternoon on the, on the death table. Hopefully when you guys have found us, and saying, when you find us, this is the person on that on Cindy, uh, Cindy Gato, and this is where the car is, this is where the, um, um, where the insurance policies are, this is where the will is not all that stuff. Okay, so that note should explain everything from this newest development in your life, as far as the plan to take, to kill each other and then move on. No, that note doesn't explain it, it just tells them where everything is. Okay. To contact, contact uh, Aunt Cindy. Well, yeah. That's Megan's Aunt Cindy. Megan's Aunt, yep. And what's her last name again? Cop Copco or something? Her main name is Copco. Yeah, okay. All right. So some of this stuff is for some of this stuff is for the family. Okay, both sides. Um, why was Tyler saying he wasn't returning to school this semester? He might not have been returning to school his school last semester because he might have been going to Montessori school. Montessori school. Yeah, he might have been going to a different school. Okay. Why was Megan telling people you guys were coming up for Christmas? And I don't know if that's in person or if that was via text. If that was you telling people via text, then let me know. Or no, we, we had never said we were coming up for Christmas. Megan never told anybody? Not to my own knowledge. For, for Christmas, for our, I think we'll just sit down here. All right. How did the... And this is more or less for me too. I mean, this is this is something that they bring up. But were the children really that receptive to it? Were, were they that understanding of this pact from the beginning? They can only understand to a certain point because they were children. Correct. Okay. But I'm saying 13 and, and 11. I mean, I have some. They can only understand to a certain point with their children. Okay. Let me explain to them. I wanted to get their feelings about the aspect of, you know, if mommy and daddy die, you know, if mommy and daddy take their own lives, uh, get their feedback. And their constant response with a different excuse to the question was they want to be with us. Okay? And do you, what do you think led Megan into researching this? What was her... Oh my God, the ridiculous amount of pain and the ridiculous amount of just art, just... She can't put in death. Holy shit, just recent miscarriage. Okay, um, tell me about that. Um, we had one miscarriage before when she got sick. When was that? Let's see, Tyler's 11, so that would be about eight years ago. Right. So she had a miscarriage. Where were you guys at eight years ago? We were living in uh, Connecticut. Uh, we just vacationed down here. You went about that Georgetown a while ago, didn't you? 2005, yeah. yeah. We bought it, and then we were expecting it. Uh, Alex, we... Pretty good. Um, so we decided to go up to family to have the baby. And that increased family tension, to be on belief. Okay. Um, so, so she miscarried about eight years ago in Connecticut. Yeah. All right. Did she go to get any, see any treatment or doctors or anything like that? She does... <sighs> She, when she got sick with that major liver thing, mm -hmm. which is real over the same time, mm -hmm. she started seeing doctors. We went to doctors up and down, thousands and thousands and thousands. Where at? Brigham, Women, Brigham Women's Children Hospital. We went to Yale. We went to Hartford Hospital. We went to uh, Bacchus Hospital. We went to... Was there any primary that she would see back home in Connecticut? Yes. Um, Dr. I... Uh, he's in Canada, Canada Dr. I can't remember his name, I'm sorry. Okay. But the other primary doctor was Dr. Kendra. Um, Kendra? Kendra. Um, Where at? Waterford Crossroads. Um, what is her last name? I can't remember her last name in a second, I'm sorry. That's what I'm saying. Uh, uh, um, what city? Where was she at? Waterford. Waterford, Connecticut. Connecticut. Yep. Okay. So she had been to the doctor up there? Yep, multiple. Has she been to any in Kissimmee or in Central Florida? 
Uh, not until we came back down here. Okay. And who was she seeing down here? She saw a lot by telecommute. She saw... She went to a celebration? She went to a celebration. Okay. So they would have, to have some type of records of her. Yeah. All right. How about the boys? How about, the, how about Zoe? Zoe, they went to the Franz Center. Where? Franz Center. Is that, where is that at? In Orlando. Okay. Um, at Spa Hospital. How about dentist, specifically? Yeah. Where at? Uh, Celebration Dentist. Celebration Dentist? Yeah. Oh, Is everybody? Your wife? Uh, my wife, no. My wife would go to... Sage. Sage Dental? Sage Dental, yes. Is that in Orlando? That's right down in the loop. Oh, the loop? Yes. Oh, perfect. Okay. And I think my two boys went there also, but I know my two boys went to pediatric dentists. Perfect. In addition to Zoe. Okay. We're going to help us, obviously. No, please. Do you know what I'm saying? No, no, no. Um, okay, well, that's good news. Um, and the most recent uh, miscarriage you talked about, you spoke of, what was that? That was in September. September? September, yeah, around right September. What happened? We took some time to get away in June. We found out we were happy, you know. Went to Nashville, went to all that kind of stuff because the kids got back, everything progressing. Boy, I started getting sick. There had been a couple times where I would fly in and literally take the next flight out to come back here because she was in such pain. Things progressing. We went to an ultrasound and it was that whole Oh, maybe this, maybe that, you know. Where did you go to the ultrasound at? The celebration ultrasound. Like celebration ultrasound or celebration? The no, hospital. Hospital. Yeah. Did you guys go to like the ER or was it just a regular it was scheduled? It was a scheduled ultrasound because we started with the um, nurse midwives because we weren't sure we were going to do a home birth or not. Okay. Um, and because Meg was over 40, they wanted to get us into ultrasound just to make sure, confirm, and everything. And there was, couldn't hear anything, couldn't see anything. How far along? We want to say it was about eight weeks, six, seven, eight weeks in that aspect. Six to eight weeks? Yeah. Okay. Uh, we're in short, so they rescheduled another ultrasound to go back two weeks later. And then um, I flew back to Connecticut, and that was one of the ones where she literally called me, got a hold of me when I landed, and said, you need to get back here because I'm having a miscarriage, I'm, I'm hemorrhaging. Good. So I flew back and she had a complete miscarriage and everything. Tell me about the miscarriage. Did you go to the hospital? She went to um, her uh, nurse midwife, sorry. Nurse midwife, where at? I'm trying to remember. I did not remember the name of it, I apologize, it's in Orlando. Okay, but, but there should be some type of documentation. There should be, yes. And was there any type of medical procedures or anything like that at that point? No. Nope. They would send her um, things like go get another repeat ultrasound or go get, you know, or not repeat ultrasound, but repeat blood work to make sure her um, blood or the hormone goes down. Okay. So she's hemorrhaging. Mm-hmm. She goes to the hospital. I don't know. Tell me, tell me about it. What happens? She lays in bed. Lays in bed. All right. How how long went passed by from the time that she was hemorrhaging to when she was seen by the midwife? How long was she in bed? I don't know. I'll be honest with you. Okay. Was there an elaborate story that you guys possibly buried something on the property? We buried the the thing on the the property. You buried the... The piece. Yeah. Okay. Where at? Underneath the bush in the back. Underneath the bush in the back. Okay. Where's the bush? Right by the propane tank. Bush by the propane tank is where you buried... uh, This little thing. You said item under... Yeah, we burned it. There we go. Thank you. You burned the ashes and then buried the ashes. You buried the ashes, yes. Okay. 
This will be your house, Tony. Correct? Right here, that's your pool? Yes. Okay. Where's the bush in for painting? This is a garage. Okay. There's a pool filter, propane tank is here, the bush is right there. Right here? Okay. So we're in that area. Mm -hmm. Okay. And the propane tank and the bush are right there. Yep, the bush is also being made behind the bush. Okay. Okay, well that answers that. I mean there was there was some concern from the family. Did you guys report that up or did you guys tell the family up north your family up north about that? We told some yeah, because yeah, some of them you know, and some of them was didn't necessarily know what to believe. Um was Megan actually ever diagnosed? I know we talked a little bit about it the other day about possibly like Lyme disease or something like that. Was she ever diagnosed anything with the kidney pain and everything? Everybody could have thrown out all different diagnoses. Nobody knows what's going on. Okay. So she had drug-induced hepatitis. Drug-induced hepatitis. Yeah. And what, who, who diagnosed her or whatnot with that? Brigham and Women's, uh, uh, um, Brigham, Women's and Children's Hospital. Okay. Where's that at? Massachusetts. Mass. Brigham Williams and Children's Hospital would have record of, of some type mm -hmm. documenting her that she has. Correct. Okay. Um, now, some of this is kind of getting off topic here, but I'm, I, I typically don't do this, but in this very I'm, extenuating circumstances, I, I felt that I should try to answer some of the questions that are out there. Obviously, it's been brought up that um, your finances are, are a mess. Yeah, a mess. Yeah. Does Megan actually know the complexity of your financial mess? Mm -hmm. This has nothing to do with the finances, though. Okay, and that's, that was kind of my... This has something to do with the fact that because with the transition, the apocalypse coming to the end of days could end at the end of December. We needed to make this transition because by the end of December, this is when this was supposed to happen. The apocalypse and everything by the end of December. Mm -hmm. Okay. How how about if she would have kept the baby? Would you guys still have done this? I, this is what's supposed to happen. I'm just saying this. I mean, you, because it seems like uh, when you speak about the, the miscarriage and stuff, that seems like it's a trigger, like it's a, a stress trigger. It's a depression. It's a, yeah, absolutely. So do, do you think, and we can speculate, I don't know, I mean, to, what's done is done. Do you think that if she was going to have, because you said you were joyous, you were happy, mm -hmm. do you think that maybe that would have changed something if she if she were to keep the baby? With the knowledge that we had, that this needs to be done then, this is what happens. Okay. Your beliefs are your beliefs. Beliefs are beliefs. Okay. All right. So you were set in stone, there was, okay. Um, did you, was, was notifying the family prior to this ever part of it, uh, ever part of the plan or anything like that? No. Okay. Keep it very private, like you said, you were kind of, Correct. you guys were a very private family. Mm -hmm. um, you guys spoke of, you guys had a will together, did Megan have one on uh, on her own. Did she have her own will? No. You guys just had a, a family. Okay. Um, and this is more or less stuff for the for the attorneys and stuff. But did you guys have any life insurance policies? Yeah, in that's right. Really, it's all in the box. In the all box. in there. Yeah. Okay. Um, you guys spoke about like Knights of Columbus or something. Knights of Columbus. Yeah. Knights of Columbus. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you know what he's talking about. Yeah. What do you want done with um, the stuff here in Florida as far as the Georgetown properties and the, the personal effects inside the home? Whatever needs to be done. Okay. I, I, I don't get involved in that. I, I'm here just speaking about the, the deaths and everything, but I, I've spoken with the family and I said, listen, that's something that maybe you guys need to work out with, with some attorneys and stuff. But I just told her I would try to, try to answer some of this. Um, we don't care. We want to leave everything behind. Okay. Because right. obviously if there's photographs and stuff like that, these are their nieces and nephews and grandchildren and that type of stuff and, and loved ones. They want, they would love to have They can have anything they want. Okay. Um, they love you. They don't understand um, everything that took place. Um, they're angry, they're hurt, but they're going to hold on to the memories and everything that they've had. And um, 
they want to remember the brother before all of this. Okay. So they looked up to you and they admired and everything for you. Um, is there any message or anything like that that you want me to relay to them? Because I will speak with them today. Just tell them that I love them, but this was done, the decision our family made to do. Okay. Maybe not so bluntly, but... No, that's fine, that's fine. Um, you said ashes earlier. Who, who, who's the cremator? Meg was. Meg? Yeah. Where'd she do it at? We got a paint can from Celebration Hardware, put it inside a, put the ashes inside of an empty paint can. So the ashes are actually inside of a pink can buried paint. underneath? No. Nope. Paint. 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 P-A-I-N-T. Paint. paint. Yep. We put them inside there, put a little olive oil, put a little bit of um, sage and burn. Let it burn. And then when they calm down, we dug this little hole and put it in the ground. In the can? Nope. Just the ashes? Just the ashes. Didn't want to pollute. Okay. I understood. I got you. Let me get you a little bit more water. I need to step out and um, go over some things real quick. You okay for now? As best we're going to be. Yes. Okay. All right. Give me a couple minutes. All right. Let me just work. Let me just work. Be tight. Yeah. 
Are you sure that you stabbed them prior to them being deceased? Yes. 100% sure. Without a doubt. Okay. So if a doctor, medical examiner, tells you that the wounds, or tells me, are done post-mortem, mm -hmm. what would you say to that? Absolutely correct. correct. Absolutely correct. Okay. You're firm on that? Firm. Okay. Because everything we've talked about mm -hmm. has been pretty damn consistent. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But the biggest things were uh, she had some concern yesterday that, that appeared and, and she even noted that the boy's injuries, without a doubt, were, were done after they were dead. Okay. I can tell you that. Absolutely 100% because after it was done, they jerked and the knife went and had to find the knife both times afterwards after I was done suffocating. Was the knife get them as they were being suffocated? No. So we'll go through this a little bit slower taste before as the far as the death. Okay. Okay. Remind me which, which way died first? Alec upstairs. Alec upstairs. He is 13. Correct. Laying in bed, mm -hmm. you have the green knife. Correct. Do you have to, uh, in an, almost an attack fashion or whatever you want to call it, I mean, I'm not sure uh, if he's awakened as my children would be, they would say something or they would, you know, see me. Did you have to close his mouth at that point to keep him from preventing? No. Nope. The way he was positioned, the, the blanket was on top of him and the stomach was totally exposed. I don't remember if he was wearing a shirt or not, but his stomach was totally exposed. And for some reason, he had pillows blocked up on his chest okay. where he was sleeping. So I put my hand on top of the pillows, the my left hand, my right hand stabbed, folded out, and then he jerked. And the knife went flying underneath the square headboard thing. Square headboard thing? Uh, the book, bookcase thing. Okay. He started swimming and kicking the wall and that kind of stuff, and that's when I was able to get... Was your left hand physically on his face? My left hand at that time was on the pillows that were on his chest. Okay. So was his face exposed? Could you see him? If I look, looked up a little bit, yes. Okay. So how many times does the knife thrust into him? Once. Once. And I can't remember which boy suffered greater injuries. Do you remember? I don't, I, as far as marked wounds, that was one had one wound each. Well, one was greater than the other, because one was more exposed than the other. Oh, okay. So almost as if it was maybe a, a slicing fashion or something like no, that? Both of them like this. How, did you, how were you holding the knife? Like downward? Downward, yeah. Okay. And so you went in like this? Mm -hmm. Yeah. You wouldn't go in like this? No, I mean, Alex, it was like this, because I was going like this side. You were like this, you had his arm over the pillow, and your yes. stomach's here, his head's here, feet are over here. Yes. Okay. Come right hand. Your right hand. Your wife was right hand. My wife was, yes. Okay. And Tyler, mm -hmm. what happened there? I was like this on top of him, and he right came with him. I don't remember how I held up the knife on that one, to be honest with you. So they were getting in the stomach, I pulled it out, and in the midst of him kicking, the knife went behind the sofa, right in between the sofa thing. So you had to retrieve it in between each, each kill, right? Mm -hmm. How were you holding it with? I don't remember how I was holding Tyler, to be honest with you. You said he was more of a fighter, and that's He's stronger, yeah. He's more of a fighter. So would that be more of a blindsided thing? I mean, there was, were you quiet about it? I was quiet about it for both of them. Yeah. Okay. Well, I mean, there's gonna be, that's going to be some of the major discrepancies just between that. I mean, you're saying that was first before the killing or before the death, and then and the doctor's going to say something else. But other than that, um, you take full... You take full responsibility once it's done. Okay. If I could commit suicide right now, I would. Okay, well, we're not going to let you do that. I'm just... I know. 
I, I've made that very clear to everyone that I've spoken with that, that you do not want to be here. Okay. Uh, I'm sorry, I have a different belief than you. I, I don't just... No disrespect towards you, but I hope there's none towards me. No, I just want to make Okay. Uh, you've treated me with the utmost respect the entire time. Same. From day one. And I've done the same to you. Yes. Um, That's why I'm not hiding behind lawyers or anything. This is what happened. I, I completely uh, commend them. I mean, it's, it's, it's a very tragic thing that... Um, you're right. You, 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 you spoke the other day. You, you, you walked to a beat of a different drum or something like that, mm -hmm. you as, a, as the family. Um, absolutely. I mean, you're going to be judged by society on certain things that you've done and, and a lot of stuff. And whether you care or not, that's up to you. Even by your own family. That's fine. Um, you don't need to understand everything we did. Correct. Maybe and I were on the same page. We knew what we needed to do. We did it. Okay. That sounds snarky, I'm sorry. You're fine, dude. Don't okay. listen. You're the, one of the most polite guys I've had in here, I can tell you that. One thing. Yeah, go ahead. The other day you said that you don't tell everybody, family or friends, your beliefs and all that. Why is that? Because we get judged. You get judged how? Um, we get certain things like, for example, I'll... I'm trying not to... Well, remember being recorded right a second? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Everything we've said has been recorded. Well, no, no, no. I just want you to know that. Right? Will the family hear this? What family? My family. Dear? Does it hear this? Okay. Okay. So, no means then. Um, we went out looking at houses, and granted, we have different tastes in houses, different tastes in different decorations. Mm -hmm. This is a little bit. It's always a la la, must be nice, that kind of stuff, and always kind of a little that way. So, no, no, why we believe in people. They just don't understand why we go organic, why we go gluten-free, why we do this, you know, why it's always judged. So we just stop telling everybody. Okay. I know that's the part of food, but our own beliefs, even the fact that we follow a very non-traditional Catholic religion, we're still judged. We're judged. We're judged. Do I what we do, you know? So we don't. We don't tell people anything. Well, that's your... That's your beliefs, and you can stick by them, and I... And I, yeah, I, I said, I respect that. Were the kids happy? They were very happy yeah. with us. They were happy. They lived a very happy life with us. Yeah. I did. I did miss them. Yeah, I, I mean, I can't get, like, like we said the other day, I, I, I can't understand the children, but if that's something that you guys discuss, yeah, their whole life ahead of them now. These beliefs, when did, when did you guys start kind of getting into the, the, the beat of the different drummer and all that type of stuff, and was it? It's been transitional for a while. Yeah. Was it you or Meg that was primarily, uh... I was born a follower. You were born a follower? I was more of a follower. Oh, more of a follower. First of all, do you have anything else of me right now? Do you have any questions or any concerns or anything like that right now? Um, unfortunately, for your sake, we are still on this side, okay? Um, you're not with your family right now. So you are going to be charged with their murders, you understand that? That's fine. Okay. So, I mean, it's, it's a formality that, that we have to take part in, okay? I know you, you, you may see things differently. Oh, I understand. Okay. 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 Um, I will make some phone calls to your family just to kind of update them and keep them up to date. Okay. Um, without a doubt, the persons that we pull from, from your home are your family. Correct? Okay. Correct, yeah. It's Megan, Zoe... Tyler and Alec. Okay. The reason why I kind of went over some of the um, the dentistry and that type of stuff is yeah. obviously decomposition. From, yeah, because of the decomposition, we had a little bit of a, a delay in that. The family does know; they don't know some of the grotesqueness of it behind it. I've I've kept it kind of private between um, us. So we're going to work on obviously 
some DNA stuff and everything like that, and uh, then we're going to take it from there. Yeah, it's that, it's that. And I appreciate it. You know, like I said, obviously this, this has been a video audio recorded every which way. Uh, um, every part of this investigation, you've been highly cooperative. You've never uh, denied anything. The only discrepancies that we've had is, is post-mortem stab wounds versus what your version of events is. Mm -hmm. And that will be duly noted in my report, in my investigation. Okay. I'm not lying to you about there was stop first. Okay. Okay. So, yeah. All right. okay. Um, so just hang tight for us here. Um, I need one more thing. Yeah, I'm so sorry. No. You've been in the hospital the last couple of days, correct? I don't know how long I've been in the hospital. Okay, well, the last couple of days. Wednesday. Yeah, Monday. Monday, yes. yes Wednesday. Yes. You're not on any, any kind of medication. You didn't get any type of... Uh, well, you you didn't, you're not under the influence of anything right now. Um, you know, you didn't you didn't get you didn't take anything while you're in the hospital that would alter your mind or your thought process or they gave me something. Uh, you're not knowing the day or week, you know where you're at, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. You're at the Osceola County Sheriff's Office and everything like that. Okay. No, I don't. So yeah. Okay. Just, yeah. yeah. All right. I just wanted to go back and say, oh, I don't know what the hell I was saying. I'm on sound mind, and you know, that's sound mind. I'm okay. I did it. Yeah. It was over with. Okay.